Hey guys, welcome back to the Golang and React project series. We had worked on our main.go file and now we'll start working on our entries.go file. So connection.go file is going to be very straightforward. It'll be just connecting with the database MongoDB and I'll work on it after a while. But now we want to focus on our uh, routes uh, package, which is entries. So both of both of these files will belong to the route package. But now we want to work on our entries.go file because this will have this file will have all these functions which are giving, currently giving us a squiggly line. And uh, what I wanted to make sure is you have that you have a one is to one um, connection with all these functions. So make sure that all of these functions exist in this file. And the right way to do this is to first create the outlines of these functions. So what I want you to do is you create the outline of all of these functions and add entry is going to just get uh, gin dot context and obviously you'll have to have an import statement somewhere which will get your gin package and we'll worry about it uh, in, a, in a while but first we need to create the outline of these functions so the second function that we want to create the outline for is get entries which is basically getting all the entries again it gets access to c gin dot context and then you have get entries by ingredient function. Somehow my tab nine is not being very smart at the moment. It's not getting me these functions. All I want are these functions. And I don't know why it's not able to get me these. Okay, so add entry. Uh, why is that why has not it's not connected it yet to this function yet I don't know anyhow get entries by ingredient again I'll have C gin dot context now the benefit with gin in case you haven't watched any of my series earlier is that you get access to your params and your uh, request body all of that through the gin context itself you don't have to necessarily specifically mention W and H which are your HTTP writer and your uh, your HTTP request and your writers you don't have to specifically uh, reference them here um, which you have to do in the HTTP package right uh, by the way Jin is calling them only those functions only in the in the um, like if you look at Jin's code if you open it up it, that's what it's doing it's uh, essentially making requests to that only but uh, it's just doing that under the surface so you get much cleaner code so the other thing that you want to uh, get is the get entry by id okay again gen not context now uh, see what, what tab 9 is saying that i should also get my id here but what tab 9 doesn't know right it being ai and all of that it doesn't know is that gen gives me access to the id params uh, automatically okay which which i can reference from c i can uh, you know get access to it from c itself okay so get entry by id was one more function then we have our update in gradient function and then we'll have our update entry function so it's a func update entry And the last function usually is the delete function. So delete entry. Okay. So now that we have the uh, reference, uh, so sorry, the outline of these functions, I'll just control S. Even though I've written gin, it should have been able to get gin for me, but it didn't. And let me see. Okay. So all of these quick lines have gone away. Only add entry, entry by ID are remaining. And why is that? Add entry looks legit to me it looks okay the same it's the same spelling right the same spelling yeah still there's some issue entry by id oh so this entry by id should have been get entry by id so i'll write here get entry by id so only this squiggly line is here for add entry. I don't know why. Anyhow, so we'll, uh, it's anyways going to get fixed. So firstly, but firstly, we'll work on our delete entry function because 
the read function is, is the easiest function, right? And then the get all function is the second easiest function. Then you have get uh, entry, entry by ID is the third easiest function and so on. And like usually update function is, is complicated. So you want to start with delete function. And here I'll take a variable called entry ID, which will basically be equal to the params dot ID. So I can refer my C, which is my gin context, and I can refer params. I can get access to ID. Uh, this is the beauty that you get with gin, because obviously when you want to delete something, you need the ID of that thing that you want to delete, right? So this is why we have this, and then you want to have the primitive package to get object ID from hex, and we'll pass the entry ID to it. And then we'll get that in doc, doc ID, and then that'll make it easier for us to access and work with it. Now we'll say context with timeout. You don't want your program to keep uh, waiting when you're working with the database, so you always want to have a timeout. If you worked with PHP before, you probably know what is timeout. If you worked with um, Ruby, you probably have worked a lot with uh, timeout. And then you have your, um, we'll have an entry entry collection, okay? So entry collection is basically, um, we'll, we'll create our entry collection. Right at the top is where we need to create our entry collection, so we'll say, Entry collection is uh, mongo dot collection. Okay, which is equal to open collection client comma calories. So you will get access to calories collection which is basically going to be called as entry collection and you'll get access to that from your Mongo. And um, client is basically your Mongo client. So we'll define all of that in the connection.go uh, package. Don't worry about that right now. Connection.go file, sorry, which is again part of package routes. That's why we're able to access it so easily. We'll create that here in this file. But for now you need to know that entry collection is basically our collection that uh, enables us to work with the particular collection in the database for uh, MongoDB. Okay, so in the delete entry function, <clears throat> you want to have entry collection dot delete one. So we're just telling MongoDB, hey MongoDB, you need to use the uh, a particular collection and then you want to delete that particular value from that collection. And we have access to that value with ID. And the ID here is doc ID, which we just received. Whatever result you get back, you'll store that in a variable called result. And whenever you run a, a database function like this, you can expect errors. And you would want to ideally handle those errors there itself. So we'll say if error is not equal to nil, that means if there is an error, you want to say HTTP dot uh, status internal server error, comma gen dot h, and there is an error. So the error that will be there will be error dot error. And you will print out the error as well. A lot of people ask me, why do you need FMT to print in Golang? I mean, the very, very uh, new new people who are learning Golang, they ask me, why, why is there no function for print printing uh, You know, by default? Why do you have to import a package? That's because Golang is very, very modular. So only the things that you want in that particular program, uh, you can you know, import them. Otherwise, if you, if you don't need them, don't. Uh, you know, use those packages. And obviously Golang stops you from using those packages anyways if, you, if you're not using those functions. That makes Golang very light and modular and that's actually one of the benefits that you get with Golang. The binary files that you get uh, after building it are very, very small and that contributes to the speed and lightness of Golang. It um, consumes much less resources. If everything goes well, you want to say everything was okay, status okay, and here, I don't know why it uh, just completed it for me. I want to say result dot deleted count. So in my result variable, I'll have a deleted count and that's what I want to return here. Tab 9 couldn't guess that so much for it being AI. 
Okay, so um, now we'll work with the get all entries function because like I said, that's the second easiest function. So what you'll do now is you will first create your context. So you'll say context cancel, context comma, cancel is equal to context dot with timeout, context dot background, comma, 100 multiplied by time dot second. We'll create a variable called entries. It's a slice. So if you see something like this, like these two uh, brackets here, it is a slice in Golang and of type this, this is the type. So it'll be collection, basically it's collection of BSON entries. And then I'm defining a variable called cursor. And this is going to be equal to entry collection that we have defined together just a while back, which help us, helps us to talk to that particular collection in MongoDB because MongoDB doesn't have tables, it has collections. I hope you know that by now. So what you wanna find is everything. You wanna find all of uh, you know the records. And like I said, anytime you run a database collection, uh, database function, you want to handle error. So you'll say if error is not equal to nil, you want to do something there jc.json will be http dot status internal server error comma chin dot h and you will get an error which will be error dot errors you want to print line the just the error you want to print out just the error and you want to return So now you um, run the find function. So find is a default function that you get with MongoDB. You run the find function, you get all the values, right? You're passing uh, nothing there, so you'll get all the values back. When you when you pass like an empty uh, object in find, you get all the values. You know that by now. If you want some specific values, then you pass here that you know for ID is equal to this, or you know where, um, not exactly where, but you know, you, you get the idea, right? When you want something specific, you say find by ID or find find one, something like that. But all these values that you get from the database is in a very raw kind of a format. And you want to have it in this entries variable, which is uh, a slice. You know, you want it in a, in a much more consumable format. So how do you do that? You'll say cursor, which is uh, where all of our values are right now. So I'll say cursor dot all, we'll take all the values pass the context, pass this empty uh, variable right now, which is empty variable right now called entries. And you wanna say if error equal to, and then here you will handle the error itself. So you'll say error is not equal to nil. And here you want to say c.json, HTTP internal server error, and you'll print out the error. So you'll say chin.h, okay and you will print out the error awesome just like what you did here and here again the same thing actually just copy and paste it and then you return all right and uh, at the end just defer cancel you wanna print out the entries And since everything has gone okay, because it's not in none of these if conditions, everything has gone okay, uh, because there's no error, right? So if everything has gone okay, then you wanna say status okay, and you want to return the entries from this function. Now, this is it for this video. In the next video, we'll actually tackle the connection.go first, and then we'll, actually, we'll tackle the rest of the uh, functions quickly and then we'll wrap this up actually in the next video itself we'll wrap this up thanks a lot for watching do subscribe if you haven't uh, already i'm sure you're having fun with this project right it's a very quick uh, in and out kind of a job we're you know quick coding quickly we'll be out quickly and uh, thanks a lot for watching see you in the next video